Good evening, friends, and welcome to the United Methodist Church of Red Bank. I'm Pastor Cam, here with our music director, Evan Courtney. Here on the longest night of the year, it is a tradition in the Christian faith to observe the longest night of the year with a watch service. And so we are keeping watch with you tonight and thinking through and sitting with the darkness at this time of the year. One of the reasons that Christmas falls during the winter solstice time is because it is a celebration of Christ's light coming into our darkness. And even the creation all around reflects this. And so tonight, if you are wrestling with the darkness, we invite you to spend a little time with us in prayer, in song, and in reflection, that we may invite Christ to sit with us in our darkness, that the Holy Spirit may lift up our downtrodden hearts. So whether you are grieving a loss, maybe it was recent, maybe every time the holidays come up, it brings up memories and emotions and feelings, or whether you're feeling the dissonance between the brightness and the joyous vernacular of the season and the suffering in the world around us, we invite you into these moments of reflection. So dear ones, we hope that these next 15 minutes or so of prayer, song, and reflection are meaningful to you. Let us pray. Merciful God, in this season of rejoicing, we come to you weary and grieving. In this season of feasting, we hunger for healing and relief. In this season of light, our hearts are veiled in sorrow and shadow. Will this season ever end? Yes, we hear your yes. Lord, we are confident in your faithfulness, but we ask that you sit with us in our grief tonight. Yet still we know, those who are weary will find rest. Those who mourn will be comforted. Those who hunger will be filled. And we know that the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness will not overcome it. As we light the Christ candle for tonight, we welcome you, O Christ, light of the world. Stay with us in the midst of our suffering, and when the time is right, lead us on from this place of darkness into your abiding and life-giving light. Amen.
Hear these words from the prophet Isaiah in the voice translation. On this humbled ground, a tiny shoot, hopeful and promising, will sprout from Jesse's stump. A branch will emerge from his roots to bear fruit. And on this child from David's line, the spirit of the eternal one will alight and rest. By the spirit of wisdom and discernment, he will shine like the dew. By the spirit of counsel and strength, he will judge fairly and act courageously. By the spirit of knowledge and reverence of the eternal one, he will take pleasure in, the, in honoring the eternal. He will determine fairness and equity. He will consider more than what meets the eye and weigh in more than what he's told. So that even those who can't afford a good defense will nevertheless get a fair and equitable judgment. With just a word, he will end wickedness and abolish oppression. With nothing more than the breath of his mouth, he will destroy evil. He will clothe himself in righteousness and truth. The impulse to right wrongs will be in his blood. A Blessing When the World is Ending by Jan Richardson Look, the world is always ending somewhere. Somewhere the sun has come crashing down. Somewhere it has gone completely dark. Somewhere it has ended with the gun, the knife, the fist. Somewhere it has ended with the slammed door, the shattered hope. Somewhere it has ended with the utter quiet that follows the news from the phone, the television, the hospital room. Somewhere it has ended with a tenderness that will break your heart. But listen, this blessing means to be anything but morose. It has come not to cause despair. It is simply here because there is nothing a blessing is better suited for than an ending. Nothing that cries out more for a blessing than when the world is falling apart. This blessing will not fix you. It will not mend you. It will not give you false comfort. It will not talk to you about one door opening when another closes. It will simply sit itself beside you among the shards and gently turn your face toward the direction from which the light will come gathering itself about you as slowly the world begins again. represents our suffering and the suffering of the world. In the light of God's love, we claim God's gift of truth. There is no need to hide or deny. God welcomes us as we are. As the psalmist says, incline your ear, O God, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. This candle 
represents our suffering and the suffering of the world. In the light of God's love, we claim the gift of lament. We recognize our wounds and cry out to God. We accept God's invitation to express every feeling and every question. As Jesus himself and the psalmist both have said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? From my words of my groaning. Oh God, my God, oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I find no rest. We light this candle as it represents our suffering and the suffering of the world. In the light of God's love, we claim the gift of courage. Courage to be honest, to seek help, to comfort one another. Courage to dare to love and to dream again. As the psalmist says, the Lord is my strength and my shield. In him, my heart trusts, so I am helped and my heart exalts. And with my song, I give thanks to God. This candle represents our suffering and the suffering of the world. In the light of God's love, we claim God's gift of hope. God is good. God is strong. God is near, leading us to a day without tears and pain, without sin and death. Healing and deliverance are coming, if not now, then someday. By awesome deeds you answer us with deliverance, O God, of our salvation. You are the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you in a time of coldness and darkness looking for warmth and light. There are those whose homes are physically freezing, and there are those whose lives are spiritually chilled. We know that we can help warm people's hearts. We also know that you can warm people's lives. We pray that there will be no more gloom for those who were in anguish. We pray that you will lift away people's burdens we pray that you will remove the things that oppress from people's lives. We pray that you give courage to those who fear. Lord, your light calls us forth to follow and serve you. Your light still shines for all to see in the world. May we continue to reflect your light in our lives, in our service, and in our words and in our deeds. Amen.
Dear ones, we hope that these prayers, this music, these reflections have found an echo in your heart. And we pray that any time you need a word of comfort, that you'll return to this time of reflection and that you will be reminded of the light that shines within our deepest, darkest night, the light of Christ that has given hope to people of every age and shown in every conceivable situation. Christ still shines over us as well. Please receive this benediction. May you go forth with the love of God, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of their Holy Spirit, shining light over you in the midst of the darkness, that you may, you may be moved to the joy, that in time you may be moved to the joy of this season, this new hope, that we find in a manger. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>